Roger, right, watching TVC Breakfast. Let's get to our next discussion now. Nigerians are going through a tough time right now, faced with the scarcity of fuel that has lingered for months and seeing the price of the product skyrocket. Many are now also faced with scarcity of uh, Naira notes. But there is hope on the horizon, as if he were a seer who looked into the crystal ball and saw the future. The presidential candidate of All Progressives Congress had enumerated all these in his economic blueprint with the promise to reposition the economy. Ashiwa Jubola Tinubu has assured of a private sector-driven economy if elected president. To tackle perennial fuel scarcity, the APC candidate says he will put an end to fuel subsidy regime. Bola Tinubu says he will, as a matter of urgency, address the fiscal monetary and trade reforms to effectively increase domestic production thus serving to curb imported inflation and to ensure better macroeconomic stability by accelerating inclusive growth and job creation across Nigeria. So this is the crux of our discussion next. Joining me now is a lawyer and member of the APC, Sheung Falaye. It's nice to have you join us in the studio right now. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. Thank now, you. I'd like to start from some of the uh, issues that have been trending in the last uh, week and so on. Then we, we, we begin to bring out some, some of the things around them. The governor of uh, Kaduna State, Rufai, uh, had mentioned uh, the fifth columnist, if I have to put it that way, you know, people working against the candidate or working against your candidate. And uh, I, I wonder what you make or what we should make of all of this if it is assumed that members of the same party who are supposed to work, you know, to ensure that uh, their candidate emerges are working against the party? Well, um, it is what it is. Um, I, I think that what is important to note is that the majority of Nigerians, the common man out there that would decide who the <coughs> president, the next president of this country would be, not mm -hmm. some of people in faceless people somewhere. So we're focused on delivering the message of hope, the message of economic renaissance to these Nigerians because we believe that they essentially will make the choice. And if there's any uh, uh, thing to go by the feedback we're receiving, that message is resonating with them. We are on course as we speak based on our internal polling to at least uh, cross the threshold in at least 30 states of the Federation, which means that the messages that Ashwaju has been going about uh, propagating to the people is getting home. And you must understand that uh, this is not strange to our candidates. At every time that he has contested for election, he has always been the underdogs. He has always been written off. At the primaries, he was written off. He became victorious. At, uh, during, in Lagos State, he was challenged. He was an underdog fighting against uh, Obasanjo. But, I mean, we all see what he did at that time. So we're not... Uh, perturb in any sense. The, the most important thing is to continue to give your message to the people, tell them the things that you want to do, mm -hmm. portray your capabilities, and he's doing that, clearly. Tell us about the polling. Well, um, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it, it, we, we know that well, there we've are seen people. all kinds of polls. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there are polls. Yeah. 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 Give me your own poll, and I give you my own poll. <laughs> that, that's what we see. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure that uh, any, any polling has come out from our side, but we've seen polling that you know, indicates that the, the, this party will win uh, landslide, this one will win landslide. We know the people behind those. Things. There's no credibility to those polling uh, in any way. But, of course, because we work scientifically, in every uh, areas we're focusing on, we're scientifically, you know, deciphering what those people want to hear, what are really germane to them. And our polling suggests, based on the feedback that we have, that we are on the threshold to crossing the 25% mark in 30 states of the Federation and with the majority number of votes. Yes. And so we intend to win this hands down at the first time uh, out. So... There's really no doubt about that. Nigerians should be careful. Still talking yeah. about polling, yes. but one of the, the, the difficult places to poll, just as in census, is, is the north. Yes. You know, because one, because of the architecture and because of the culture, it's difficult to say you're going to really, really poll. Did you go, how, do you, how, how, how do you navigate this kind of problem in that 
in that area. It, because it, we've seen that it, too in the in the in the in the, in the financing that yes. it is not it's not it's not taken into consideration the cultural are you a finance guy? Yeah, it didn't even, even it didn't even take into consideration the cultural aspect mm. of, I, I, of of finance. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that's key because um, some of the polling data that I've seen from mm. you know the the pretenders, so to speak, I've seen them calling people uh, on using the on the phone, uh, calling uh, three hundred people. If you're going to conduct a detailed and uh, truthful you know, poll, you go into the communities, you go into the rural areas, you deploy the necessary cultural tools that is useful for them to speak and tell you their own um, thinking about the election. And that's what we've done internally. We've, uh, in those areas, either from the southwest, the northwest, the north central, we've utilized traditional deep-rooted um, network to get this feedback, and we're, we're, we're reliant on them, and we're confident that they speak to the, to the interest of the people. This, this polling, I wonder, in this part of the world, uh, we seem to be uh, maybe copying the West now. Uh, you see different polls. It never used to be part of anything around here. For instance, the issue of the media... Uh, debates uh, are coming to stay now, but what is that? What are the impacts of all of this polling on how people vote? To be to be honest, uh, as a party and mm. as a political group, uh, I think polling has always been part of our methodology. Okay. You know, I, in, I, I don't know how uh, the opposition has been using it, but at each time that we've undertaken election uh, as ACN, as APC, as AD. We've engaged in one polling or the other to show us where we stand and then walk towards what, where we want to be. And that's very important. No, well, so you are, you, I think it's the, the ACN, the, the, we, are the, we are the first yes. to even do even internal polling yes. in this country. Yes, yeah. yes. So we've always done that, uh, really. But of course, uh, people are copying that now. But when you want to copy it, you copy it in the right and you know, truthful mm -hmm. and manner. But beyond that is to say that for any serious politician, uh, or pu public uh, 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 sector analysts, you must engage the mood of the people. You mm. must know what their desires are. You must know what is really the, the, the key issues that they want you to address. And it is by polling and sampling that you do that. But the key thing is to ensure that that sampling is done effectively and efficiently and in a very transparent and credible manner. Mm. But what we see around that is being banded around are obviously poll data that are induced to skew people's... Uh, Tendentious uh, polling. Yes. Mm. But for a particular they will get the results, they will get the results in that. <laughs> no, no, respond to, yeah. respond to um, this uh, fuel crisis to start with. Can you paint a scenario if we didn't have the... what I call a, a milokon to the Abel Kuta outcry of Ashura Jibolatin imagine what the situation will be now. You see, it's, it's very important for Nigerians to note that if you look at the fuel crisis, the Naira crisis, if there's been any candidate that has actually been agitating and fighting for the common man in terms of making the efforts, diverting government's attention and uh, focus to addressing those issues is assured you. It has always been at the side of the common man to ensure that the government go the extra mile to cater for their challenges, to cater for their needs. And uh, it is in that spirit that you will see him agitating and saying, look, some of these issues, some of these challenges are designed to, you know, perhaps impoverish the, the electorate and, of course, scuttle uh, the electoral process. So it's important to put that in perspective. When you look at all of the candidates, and when I'm going to speak into the Naira redesign now, none of them, particularly the Labour candidate, has come out. This is the first time from your news report that I'm hearing you say anything about the sufferings of Nigeria. We see it. You know, you know. I know what I'm dealing with in assessing Naira in Nigeria. And for a candidate that is seeking the election of uh, the vote of Nigerians not to come out and speak to that, it shows that they don't care about the people. Even he spoke to it and he said that uh, we should support it. We should support. So are we? Are he's we a yes, he's a billionaire. He's a billionaire. He's asking uh, uh, the ordinary ordinary person to, to bear the, the bear some income. They are not using adjectives, as I said earlier. Um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Article said little inconvenience. 
uh, obesity some inconvenience. So we should now have the inconvenience and they shall have the comfort. Let, Is that let, what they are saying? Let me that they are not uh, in short, they are belittling they, they, the, they, they the, they the, suffering, the because, suffering of the people. Because they are far removed from the reality. But we will tell them what the reality is. The reality right now is that people can go to the market and shop. People, businesses, first and foremost, you need to understand that almost 50% of contributors to Nigerian economic activities and GDP are small business owners. These small business owners not only constitute about 98% of our businesses, they also employ almost 80% of workers, employ employable people around. And they deal mostly in cash. And when you down stifle cash availability to them, you are crippling the economy. If the history and the lessons from Indian experience is anything to go back, you've more or less demonstrated this economy by stifling cash. Now, we are not saying that this policy is bad. We're saying the implementation is is very, very bad from what we see across the country. Now, in every public policy, trust is the most important element when you're articulating any public policy. Now, when CBN came out to say that you should do a currency swap, which was what this was supposed to be, nobody ever told Nigerians that if, you, if I pay my 1 million naira in, my 10,000 naira in, I'm not going to get it back. They said, Bring your old note and collect new notes. Mm -hmm. But what we've seen now is you've given your notes and you're not getting anything, anything back. It's dangerous. People are suffering. People are hungry. People are angry. Now, the other articulation of the CBN and everybody is that, oh, it's going to help the electoral process and make it more transparent and bring integrity. And let me decipher this. Whether we like it or not, Cash is still an element, an integral element of the electoral process. And I'll tell you why. On election day, INEC is going to employ ad hoc staff. Mm -hmm. They're going to transport materials from point A to point B. A police, Nigerian police, would deploy its staff. Even the party would deploy their agents because the agents are an integral part of that electoral process and the integrity of that process. All of these guys will be paid money and in in cash. You can tell me that we'll transfer to their account. But transferring to their account in itself is not enough if they are going to use that money to enter public transport because they are going to use that money to buy food. So how, if they can't assess the money that you transferred into their account, how are they going to do that? And how do you then justify or ensure the integrity of the electoral process? I think I, the I, president... I wrote, I wrote in uh, November 7 in my column that it will get to a point that was November 7, that it will be hard for you who is selling Kosei in Jigawa to do your business. It is. Or if you are selling your Gwono soup in Baeza to do your business. Is that not what you are seeing today? It is. That's what you, you are seeing today. I will crave your indulgence. You know, because sometimes when we borrow ideas from different clients and, you know, we, we, we bring it here, we must be careful. Like I said, our... Electronic payments system and e-payments or whatever that we're trying to encourage, as, as laudable as it is, as prevalent as it is in the urban centers of Kano and Lagos and all of that, is still very, very minuscule. Now, I will read um, um, from Andrew Griffith. Andrew Griffith is a member of parliament in yeah. the UK yeah. and is also the director of policy of number 10. And that's a very, very uh, key position, position. to hold. Mm -hmm. He, he, he just permits me to read. He said, one of the macro trends we are likely to see continue in 2023 is the continued switch away from cash to electronic payments. Over the last decade or so, the use of cash to pay for goods and services had, have declined by almost three quarters. The industry body, UK Finance, reports that 85% of all payments are now made electronically. I'm getting somewhere. It is not just the young Around, it is not just the young. Around eight of, out of 10 people of retirement age are using contactless card for technology at least, one, at least once a month. However, as telegra Telegraph readers regularly, because I saw this in the Telegraph, regularly and rightly point out, for now, cash is a necessity that millions couldn't live without. 
and a backup for all of us if online systems fail. Just as with COVID and higher cost of energy due to Putin's invasion of Ukraine, protecting the vulnerable is, the, is, the, is at the core of this government's value. We will not leave behind the rural communities, the elderly, or those who use cash to manage their personal finances as the UK undergoes this transition. Mm -hmm. And the point I'm making is this. UK has 85% electronic payment penetration. And it is still, with that 85%, Proposing a bill that will entrench, that will ensure the availability of cash mm -hmm. to people. So why are we in an economy that is mostly driven by cash, that is not that do not have the penetration level that the UK has, mm -hmm. now stifling people with cash? By the way, electronic payments and other channels are supposed to be an alternative or an addition. It doesn't mean cash. I, I can choose not to have a bank account. I can choose to transact in cash. It's not illegal. So you can't force me towards that. All you need is encourage me, and I'll make the decision the whether, I want, of to, technology. Yes, yeah. whether <laughs> I want to pay cash or not. So I don't know where this CBN got the idea from, but clearly it is, going to, it is already damaging our economy. People are not going to work anymore. People are queuing. Already people are taking tallies at work to uh, at banks now, like we used to do 30, 40 years ago, to, to make payments. Mm. So really, we need to consider this, uh, this policy. And no, no, I speak to what um, Mepele has been saying, that he has made the money available to the bank CEOs. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> that oh. the bank CEOs are not even, they are not saying anything. But they, they, are not, they are not giving us any money. So what's going on? They are not saying anything because there is, a culture of fear between the banks and the CBN, given that is the all of conquering overseer. So they won't say anything. But if I were the president, I would pick up my call and call the bank of MDs. How much have you received today? How much has been given to you? So it's easy for the governor to sit down and say, oh, I've given you money. But the banks, if they've given you money, they will pay because they are the ones suffering the brunt. They are suffering the brunt of Nigerians daily. So they won't keep money in their vault and be telling the us we don't have money. It's because the money although is there not are, available. Although there are videos we're seeing of... Uh... Some banks hoarding the new Naira notes. All but, the six but, million, yeah, six but, million Naira. Yeah, but let's talk oh, about 5, 000, that. Let, let's, five million Naira. Let, let's talk about that after the break. Let's talk about that after the break. <laughs> You're watching TVC Breakfast. And we are looking at some of the issues going on right now. But uh, the hope that is on the horizon is what we're discussing. Now, let's go on a break. We'll be right back shortly. Stay with us. You're watching TVC Breakfast, and on this segment, we've been looking at what Nigerians are talking about, but uh, we are seeing it from the perspective of the fact that uh, the ca a candidate of one of the ruling political parties, APC, 
uh, he's saying that in all of this, I have a solution to bring to Nigerians and see how we can make Nigeria grow and become different from how it has always been. I have in the studio a member of the APC and the lawyer, Sheung Faleye. We have been looking at all of this, dissecting the realities of the issues. Now, Sheung, before we went on the break, we we're talking about the Naira redesign. Yeah. And as it is, we have seen a lot of videos of people fighting within the banks. We've seen people even attack. In fact, the riot, the, the demonstration in, uh, and the attacks in, in Ibadan, in Oyo, we saw that. In Benin, we saw that. In fact, people stripping naked in banks as we are protesting the fact that I, my money is here. I can't get my money, you know, as, as the case may be. Now, in all of this, some people have said that they seem to be a deliberate attempt at creating a scenario like that for a certain uh, outcome. What do you make of that? Well, Nigerians are asking questions. Our party members are asking questions mm -hmm. because it's, it's believes, you know, common sense that at the time that we're having a crucial election, some issues are agitating the peace and stability of Nigeria. I mean, um, what, what you see, whether uh, contrived or not, is a recipe for disaster. And I'm not sure any government, any same government, uh, you know, in, even in the guise of a, a good policy, would want to see that. And that's right why we're asking, why are you hell-bent on articulating these policies in this manner? Why is there full scarcity at this rate? And what we see is that we see that for corruption one way or the other are fighting back. We've seen uh, Ashwaju talk about removal of swell subsidy. So what's going on around lack, a sudden lack of availability of fuel between either the regulators and the marketers? What, what is going on? Do you understand? We, we've seen where you're really contriving to stir up people's emotion. Because when you go to the banks, when you remove people's livelihood, when you remove people's ability to send mm. their kids to school, they will to, to eat, mm. to do their normal business. Look, I, I know people that really I go out in the morning to take they take twenty thousand naira, go and buy rice, bag of rice, um, the rice, small rice, then divide it, sell. You know, in those people can't do that anymore. The mm. people that will purchase from them are the same thing that won't do that. So. There are challenges, and if care is not taken, this could go out of hand. And that's why we're saying, look, government should really quickly retrace itself, call the CBN to order, and get things moving back in the right direction. Well, look, look, look I'm, still, I'm still baffled by the, what I would call the adjectival conspiracy of both, the, uh, of both Atiku and Obi saying, one is saying little inconvenience and some inconvenience and so on. You know, I said earlier that a former head of state went to his governor and he said, please, I have no cash. Can I have some cash? I have, uh, if you can give me one million. So there are some things I need to do, but I cannot do it. He has access mm. to a governor. Many people don't. Do not. So when... And these people, and this head of state will come out now and say, this is the problem I have. But it's in the, it's in, it's in the bush there. Yes. Eh? Doing whatever it wants to do. But it tells us the story of how a policy can alienate the people when you think that you are trying to focus on a certain set of the, or a certain cadre of the elite. You see, um, that's one example. And, you know, when you keep quiet in the face of tyranny, in the face of uh, bad policies, this mm. is what happened. Yes. Some of these candidates, particularly the PDP and the LP candidate, thought mm. that the policy would be detrimental to Ashwaj Bola Ahmed Nubu yes. by inciting the people to go against you know, his party, his candidature, you know, and all of that. And it, to be honest... We're seeing it the other way around because we're not looking, even the us as supporters, the party members are looking at, ah, what is it that this man that has promised so much, that said he will do this, he will remove forest subsidy, he will create super highways, he will enhance our agricultural products, he will, 
you know, it, it increase our outputs generally, we put in all sorts of impediments in his way. So we're hell-bent on ensuring that that victory is not truncated. And then independent Nigeria are looking at, there must be something here if all of these people are putting all of this roadblock. So it's really achieving, you know, the, the, the other, the results that they didn't anticipate. But clearly, like I said, they don't have the interest of Nigerians at heart because nobody, no right-thinking person will see the suffering that we see on the streets and then we say that this policy is a good policy or it's being implemented in the right way. And for them to keep quiet or flip-flop on it shows that Nigerians should not consider them as good leaders. Mm. Well, what impact do you think this will have on the coming polls, if at all? So from our own perspective, from our own base, our base is energized already. Yeah, this has even more, you know, put things in perspective for us mm -hmm. that we must ensure that we get out ourselves and vote and ensure that our vote count. Like I said, I'm also seeing a lot of shifts, like from some of these polling that we've done from in, in, independent candidates, looking at, they've seen the policies articulation from all of the candidates. They've seen the person with the energy that has transversed the length and breadth of Nigeria and continue to do so. And they're beginning to see that, okay, this person might actually be the right person. But of course, we also must think about the, the election day logistics. Like I said, all of these IDOC staff, INEC officials, party agents would move. They will spend money. They will lodge in hotels. They will sleep. They will buy food. This lack of cash do have something to do with that outcome and it's important that the president if he's so desirous on free and fair election must begin to put his eye i believe that the president should establish an independent commission to look at the preparation of the cbn towards this process to look at the implementation because i don't believe that he's been given the right information to make the right decision so he should put a high-power independent um, panel to quickly look at the preparations leading up to this fiasco, and then, of course, uh, is put a stop to it now, because Nigerians are really not happy, and it could damage his legacy, I'm, I'm afraid. Now, the economy is, is what it is. Um, people, cannot, people cannot get their meals, people cannot uh, move around, and so it's truncating everything. But... Emifele says he wants to do it so that people cannot spend money. When has it become the job of the CBN to monitor electoral spending? And is it, that's the problem when institutions that are supposed to be apolitical, that are supposed to be uh, removed from the day-to-day -day politics. Emifele is not Nigerian police or the CBN, as, as, uh, if I may say. It's not any law enforcement agency. Their remit is to look at our currency, our monetary uh, policies, and our economic outlook. And I, I'm surprised that an, a, an institution that is tasked with doing that, knowing where we stand economically in terms of our growth trajectory and how delicate it is, given the global, you know, uh, 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 global happenings has now resorted into stifling that growth the more. Because you have a best eye view on what's going on in the economy. You know how cash is important. You know how the availability of ability to undertake transactions is important. You are now the one that is now stifling and locking the door against people's money. It's, it's really bad. Please, tell me, if I go to the bank, and if major Nigerians or all Nigerians go to the bank today and say, look, I've given you my money. I've come the first day, second day, third day, almost a week now. You've not been able to give me. I don't think you are sound. Give me back my money. Mm -hmm. I, this can call, this can lead to a run on the banks. And it then leads to anarchy when the banks are not able to produce the money. The CBN, I'm afraid, I think has done considerable damage to the banking system and the banking culture and the trust between Nigerian people and the banking system with this policy. Because, look, the people are scared because they, 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 we've not seen, a lot of us, a lot of Nigerians have not seen. I remember that, of course, it happened in the 1983 or thereabouts when Buhari first came. 
But a lot of new generation of Nigerians have not seen a situation where they have been unable to access their money from the banks. Mm. And this is what they are seeing. And then for trying so hard to bring the unbanked to the banking sector, you've now done it in a way of bringing the banking to the unbank. Mm. You have, because people are really just going to unwind to the other side and say, mm. look, these guys cannot be trusted. You didn't want us to be putting money under our pillow. I think it's better now to be putting money under my pillow. It's going to create what yes. I can call cynical finance. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's really uh, a scary one, uh, the way you have painted the picture. And, and as it is, uh, I wonder what the, the president has said, give me seven days. Also, although seven days for fuel, but we also, Nigerians also expect that in that seven days, let it solve not only the fuel scarcity, but let it also solve the Naira, yeah. the Naira issue. Yeah. The, the House of Representatives is also waiting to watch how all of these things pan out for them to act, if they need to act, and mm -hmm. so on. But let me talk about uh, the fuel uh, scarcity. What will Ashwaju do differently? He has talked about the need to remove uh, subsidy. But how will that translate to ending fuel shortages and all the cues that we see sometimes? Uh, it's leadership, generally. But most importantly, it's simple. The availability or the increasing our capability to undertake local refinery is jamming to our fuel security as, as a people. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why we should be subjected to importation of fuel for our local consumption. Our refineries are out there. We need to get them working. As Shwaji has said that he will ensure that our refineries are up and running. He would now, of course, encourage private investment in modular refineries all mm. over. And that's what we will see. And I mean, and that's what really should we put an end to all of this issue of first scarcity. Beyond the removal of first subsidy that will, of course, eliminate all of this arbitrage and opportunistic uh, gains in that, in, in that sector. It is for government to ensure by undertaking the necessary reforms, the necessary hard work to ensure that our refineries are producing at least what we consume locally and we should be servicing our neighboring countries. It's, it's a no-brainer. And mm -hmm. for Ashwaju, these are things he would do in a heartbeat. You know. Now, we are talking about the CBM man saying that uh, he has given money to, his, to the banks. Is it not time for tra transparency? Let him publish how much he gave UBA, how much he gave GTB, how much he gave Zenit, how much he gave uh, uh, Providence or Fidelity. Let us know. Eh? Oh, how about, eh? let, let him come out and tell us. If you speak, <laughs> and, 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 and really, we should ask those questions mm. because this is a very, very dear time that we do nobody you've lost credibility the cbn has lost credibility mm. in his handling of this process and in gaining some form of trust of nigerians he must demonstrate that he has nothing to hide and he has no um, ulterior motive in this regard and by so doing it's really by publishing oh i gave the um, union bank a uh, Hundred billion yeah. on Monday. I gave this. I gave that. Then yeah. people can then know who to hold. Who to hold responsible. Mm -hmm. yeah. But another point that I must make is that look, you see, some of these things, when and I see it from you know Nigerians, we are quick to say, oh, government is corrupt. People are corrupt. First and foremost, I say it that it is people that are in government, and if the government is corrupt, it then means that we as the people are corrupt, and. Uh, what I've seen is that at little hardship or opportunity for where there's scarcity, we see ourselves also taking advantage of each other. That's why you will see a POS uh, dispenser or POS uh, attendant that normally charges 0.1%, now charging 20%. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's why you will see even the few money that the CBN has made available to banks the bankers within themselves will still give some to uh, the people that are changing money. We also must be very uh, fair to each other. And that is very important in the scheme of things. You know, well, one of the key things that an Ashwaju government will do when it comes in is the reorientation of Nigerians' mentality to, to, be, to, be, to, be, to be 
um, honest, to be to be to have self-esteem, to have you know the ability to show empathy to each other. These things are very crucial if we were to get out of some of the challenges that we face as a people. All right, with this uh, currency issue, how best should the CBN have gone about it? The time, also considering the timing as well, because we are approaching elections. So the, the timing itself was 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 ill thought of. Um, at every time that we are undertaking general elections, we know as a people that the policy is usually high. The tension in the policy is high. I don't think that's the time to then introduce some form of uh, seismic uh, monetary change. But given that as it may, even if you introduce it, the, it, it there's enough time to do that. You, there should be consultation. Did we consult with the governors who are the uh, security officers in their states who understand the challenges and the peculiarities of their communities? Did we consult with the bankers? Did we consult, did we even talk, call the manufacturing association, call the small business owners, sensitize the people? Look, in India, in UK, all of these places, when they do that, it's usually a two, three year window where they, they already, you know, talking about it. They're already sensitizing the people. All of the dispensing channels are open and, you know, I'm not sure that Nigeria, and one of the key things you will see from what the president said when he spoke was, he was assured that Nigerian meeting can produce the Naira that we want. I am not sure, and it's becoming evident, that we probably didn't have that capacity. In fact, I can report yes, sir. that when he met with the governors, uh, the president um, was uh, expressing his shock that the CBN man is now proposing to print abroad and that he had assured the president that he had the capacity to make sure that everything was going to be done in Nigeria within the time. And he gave the president a bill and the bill, president signed it. He told the governors this. Mm -hmm. They signed off on it that, okay, you, you say you can do all of this, now, he is proposing to go and print abroad. If he prints abroad, you know how long that will take? Yes. Mm. You know how this crunch, how we will suffer from this crunch? So, it means that we ain't seen nothing yet. We're not. We're not. <laughs> so it means we should be asking the right questions. Was the president deceived into this policy? Was he given the appropriate information? Was he given the right information? Because those are key. I, I see, like the right, uh, the last um, uh, guest you had there, there's no president or governor or any public that wants to see the people suffer. Let's, let's be clear about that. What is important is whether the, his advisors are giving him the right information and telling him the right things. Do you understand? So we believe that the president didn't have the right information, and we think those, info, those questions should be asked at the moment. Look, I, from the fellas that we have, MFLA is hell-bent on continuing on this trajectory. The CBN is hell-bent on continuing on this trajectory. The Bible says and, that, and I the don't Bible says that because of one man, sin came on into the old world. So, <laughs> eh? so it is possible that because of one man, suffering is all over Nigeria. It so it has to take another man to stop it. <laughs> it's, it's important because, yes, you want to stop money laundering. We, we know that um, the availability of cash outside of the public, uh, of the banking system, fuels all of this criminality. We also know that the more we bring this money into the banking system, the banks are now able to lend more and do more. But you cannot do those things to the detriment of people. Yeah. It has to be balanced. All right. Uh, as we wrap up generally, uh, you have constantly told the people, vote, Ashwaju, vote APC as it is. Talk to the people who are watching right now. Why is APC the party to vote? APC is the party to vote because when you look at the people, the three candidates that have put themselves up for election as president of Nigeria, uh, the most competent, the most passionate, the most committed amongst them, even from some of these things that we've talked about, somebody that has stood up to Nigeria is Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu. 
when you look at the policy trust of his agenda in terms of security uh, enhancements and taking us you know, further from some of the security challenges that we have, when you look at the sort of economic ideas that he has, when you look at the sort of agricultural uh, productivity that we're looking at to enhance, I don't think that there's anybody that is capable of, you know, uh, of delivering on those sort of promises. I think one of the key things that I'm also very encouraged with as, uh, from a strategy perspective is his team. When I look at the people that usually surround him, the people that he moves with, the people that he has governed with in the past and that he's most likely going to govern with when he assumes power, I'm more or less convinced that Nigeria will be in the right hands. You cannot tell me when you look at an article team or an obese team and look at an article at Shwaju's team and you think that they are in the right, they are in the same pedestal. No, these guys are in the in in a progressive, as progressive ideas go, as developmental agenda goes, they are May and Miles ahead. It looks oh. like you are echoing a fella. Yeah, are you not there? No, for no, no, no. The same no. Look, let, let's, let's, let's look at it. We've always said, oh, let's look at these guys based on their achievement. And whether we like it or not, when you look at Lagos as we speak, the sort of things that is being undertaken on a daily basis in Lagos, rail, third, fourth mainland bridge, blue line, all of this are things that look are developmental in nature that nobody in that other group as can put their names on. And this is, these, are, these are the kind of guys we need in the federal, federal, federal space. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Shon Falaye, for uh, the insight that you have brought to all of these issues uh, as perspective regarding fuel, the issue, the challenges around it, as well as the scarcity of... And the, the machinations uh, of the Kaaba. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, whether, we, whatever, is the people that will decide. Exactly. And we are confident that they will choose. And they are not ex-machina. No. All right. <laughs> thank you for coming, Shil. It's my thank pleasure you so to much. be here. We hope again. to have you again as we get along. Thank you. Thank you.